Welcome or welcome back to the Corshi family channel. This is Caitlin here and today as you can see we are finally at Cape Coast Castle. The anticipation has been brewing for weeks now with you the viewers but for years with us. We had been looking forward to this trip since the last time we had all gone to Ghana which was about 10 years ago. And it's so crazy to say it out loud. I think we were all having some withdrawals from the Ghana scenery and the chill atmosphere. But yep, if you're new to the channel, please like, comment, and subscribe. We want you to be a part of the family if this is a video that you like or enjoy. Or if you would like to see more like this, please do subscribe. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you want to interact, if you want to hear anything from me or from my dad who does most of these voiceovers, please comment in the comment section below. We will answer you. So, as we came to Cape Coast, the first thing we did was registration. And I am 98% sure that we had to pay, but I'll see if we can find the prices and if I can, I'll put it up on the screen. So before we started our guided tour, we're led into the room we are in right now, which has a 3D model of Cape Coast Castle itself, as it's off the coast of the coast of Ghana. And it also has a lot of information, background and current about the castle and about the town and the people and the culture. And it was just such a rich environment because for Alexis and I, who is the child holding the dog. We hadn't been to Ghana since we were young, but for my parents and for my grandmother, they were born in Ghana. And the fact that all of us, regardless of whether Ghana was our childhood home or not, that we're able to learn information was just so rich, you know, and it's not something that you can easily find. So this trip happened quite some time ago. And if I told you that I remembered most of what happened, I'd be lying to you. So I think it would be best to have our tour guide speak for the majority of this video. And you all are able to experience and learn the same way we did and hopefully gain something from this. Without further ado, may the tour begin. And we come down, others will join us. Good afternoon to you all. I warmly welcome you to Cape Coast Castle. I am Matilda. I will lead you around as your guide for the next 45 minutes to an hour. We are starting our guided walking tour from this place. This is the male slave dungeons. We we'll go down to have a feel about the place. We we'll come to the courtyard of the castle. We we'll walk on top of the underground tunnel. We will see part of it. We we'll move to the female slave dungeons. Possibly all of us will go through the door of no return. We shall return. We will come to condemn cell. The guided tour will take us up to the slave market. We we'll go to the governor's residence. We will see the officers before our guided tour will be over. As you read in the, for Ghana, we have three castles and about 14 existing courts. The first castle, Elmina, was built by Portuguese around 1482. We can call it St. George. The second castle is in Accra, Usu, built by Danish, 1661. And this is British Castle, 1664. This afternoon we are here, so much of the emphasis will be based on this. When Portuguese came, they settled at Elmina. They built the place for mining because they named the country Gold Coast. They were defeated by the Dutch, so they came to the land to start a trading lodge. They named the Lord Cabo Corso. Cabo Corso means short cape. They abandoned the lodge, they left. So they came. They also built a small fortified fort at the same place. They named the fort Fort Carusbeck after their king around 1653. But the fort changed hands several. <coughs> sorry, so the Danes occupied the fort. 
the Dutch. Stands now addition demolition. It was built over a period of 300 years. Materials use. And let's create a space for others. They are moving out. Kindly, let's move to the side. They are going out. So let's get them going. <laughs> Elmina was built for mining, this one purposely for transatlantic slavery. So that will be our discussion this afternoon. Questions are welcome at any point. It all started when they discovered the new world. They were then looking for strong and healthy people to replace those who are dying. So one reverend minister came to Africa by name Bartholomew de Las Casca suggested that we are strong. So they should stop using that who are dying. But then Africans were fighting among themselves, where most of the enslaved Africans were captured through intertribal conflict. Some were seen as wrongdoers, some were debtors, but many of them they didn't commit any crime. From today, Chobu, Nigeria, Benin, Salaga is in the north, the famous market. Sandema, Jendi, Kumasi coming down to central region as Mansum. That is where most of the enslaved Africans had a last shower in the river for them to look nice, attractive, to use rice. So they walked for about three minute ride. When they arrived here, the first point of call for the middleman and the merchant is the second floor. We call that place Palava Hall, which means to cook, to bargain. That is where they were examined. And after the examination, they were separated. For easy identification, Branded ions were placed in the fire, then hot metal, they stamped them with the mark. Look at the painful thing that they went through before they marched them into this darkness. The castle was officially opened to public in 1974. It was listed by UNESCO in 1979. Welcome. Now let's come, let's come, let's come, let's move. Okay, it's okay. This is now the World Heritage Site, the Living Monument. As you see the place, we are restoring the place we are painting. It is very nice with a very sad story. As we are going down there, you and I, we are not going to repeat past mistakes. We are going to learn from it that we will never ever repeat them. So once again, welcome my wonderful family. Questions are welcome for those who just joined at the starting point. I am Matilda your guide of the castle for 45 minutes to one hour. Okay. Right, so let's move down. Coming down to see the reality, and that is why we are here this afternoon. So let's see how the enslaved Africans survived. Mm. The place was even darker than this. The only source of light and ventilation where the small opening after. Ironically, my wonderful family, we are under the church. So as enslaved Africans were here dying, some were crying, they don't know why they are here and where they were going. 
They were worshiping God on top of the place. This is the dungeon that they dedicated on the floor. They urinated here. They were fed twice a day. The dungeon's five sections was designed for 1,000 enslaved Africans. But about one third of them died before the ship arrived. The smell sometimes was unbearable because some of them died and they were here with those alive. They dedicated, they were here for about maximum six weeks between man and the Almighty God. As soon as British captured the fort, Indians who live around who are worshipping here were not having access to come and worship. They performed rituals in their own way to move everything from this place precisely to where we have the Ghana Commercial Bank now. Now, when British left Cape Coast to Accra around 1877, they performed the same rituals and brought the shrine back. So, whatever you see there, the Shna Kasapra, or whatever you see there, it means that we still have the spirit here when they still perform lamentation at the shrine. This is Nana Tabir as one of the 77 spirits in Cape Coast. Lined up here are we, three ones from traditional authority men from Ghana, Hungary, and the rest. But the rest that we have here from our sisters, our brothers in diaspora, that during the great era, in the dungeons, a lot of them died. On their way walking through the thick forest, some were attacked by wild animals. They died over there. So that is why we have this here. When you go to the female dungeon to see, the final edit we have in there on themselves is also there. All right, my wonderful family, I'm done with them the first place. If you have any questions, come with us before we move on to the next place. So we are still touring the new dungeons. I hope the person will come later. In connection with the church on top of the dungeon, initially they didn't see anything wrong with having the church on top of the dungeon because it wasn't the church for us. But it got to a point that they didn't business at all. three boys. They named them Philip, Thomas, and William. They were there, but two of them died. Me, the last one, called Philip. Philip was born on Wednesday, as you know your name, after the day that you are born. Philip was born on Wednesday, where the name was Pebu, but British couldn't pronounce the name Pebu, so that name was under such Pebu. So the name of but the name of the church actually changed Anglican Church today. This man came directly to the table of the Anglican Church. He was born in 1741. He was also the headmaster of Cape Coast Catholic School, a school for mulattoes and mulattoes. This man was here for 15 years. So at this point in time of the tour, we were given 10 minutes to free roam and take photos. And after that, as the tour continued, we were coming to see the tunnel that connected the entrance and the exit. For the slaves symbolically and thankfully it has been sealed but 
because it's been sealed, we cannot enter the tunnel. So this is a middle part of the tunnel to give us more insight as to what that tunnel meant and what occurred. Alright, so we are here to look at the opening part of the tunnel. Again, if that place was not sealed, you and I could have walked through to go through the final exit. But because it was sealed, we also have this as the middle passage. Middle passage with the castle between the entrance and the exit. This was where a guy, a soldier with a gun pointing at them, counts. Make sure they have to the number. So come closer for those who want to look at the tunnel. The first person, let me show you how they are going to see. Watch your head. That is it. So that we are not going down, we are just looking through the tunnel. So those who want to have a look, let me see. Watch your head. Watch your head. Don't be scared. because no person went through this door and had the opportunity of returning back. Sometimes it's often easy to think of it as just a door, but we forget the meaning that lies behind it. Going through this door means losing contact with your heritage, your family members, your lineage, and your culture. The very thing that makes you African in terms of descent has been ripped away from you. 
your name has been changed and you are no longer viewed as a person but as property the fact that we're able to have the free will to turn around when our ancestors and our brothers and sisters did not is a feeling that is very hard to describe well this concludes the end of this video i'm so thankful that you all were here to witness this with us and experience what it is that we went through and just understand our past whether our relatives are descendants of slaves or not there's so much that can be learned from this experience and i really do encourage those who can go to go and even if you can't actually come physically to the castle just to be aware and to research about the diaspora and what it is that occurred can help educate the future generations and refuse lead to the refusal of making these same mistakes i'm so thankful for you guys i love you God bless and I'll see you in the next video. If there are no persons who end our direct road with the message. Nowadays, in our days, as we went down to the dungeons, the place is empty. It means that slave trade, that form, is no more. But we are still experiencing child trafficking, child labor, and the rest. The question is, if we decide to take a revenge, I believe it will not change anything. If we take it upon ourselves to educate people the more, let them know the truth and for them everything, make sure that those who are involved in child trafficking and roasters, they all put their story straight. So that is the message. A nice place with a very sad story. As you are going home, you will share the same message with others that nobody to allow each and every one to come down to the creators. In the sight of the creature, we are all equal. We should try and treat everyone fairly. Mm -hmm. That is my message to all of us. Thank you very much for coming to Cape Coast Castle. This is where we end. Hope to see you again. Same journey. Yes. Yes. Yes.